Most schools also have a code of conduct or behavior. So how do you balance the rules with the idea that restorative conversations and dialogue can sort out issues? So for example, if there's a clash between the two methods, aren't the rules the rules? So if somebody does something that according to the book, you have to send a note home to the parents, for example, but in the meantime, the teacher and the two parties have all sorted it out restoratively. Do you then let it get sorted out restoratively and send a note or do you stop a note and then be pulled up because you haven't followed the rules? Like where does the balance lie? Yeah. So again, something that comes up quite regularly, you know, as you say, the, the code of behavior, code of conduct says this, now we're working restoratively. So you might get a, an apology of some, some description, uh, which then, I mean, you, you know, you don't want to be, you know, kids to have a lovely, you know, conversation and, and resolution and an apology, you know, it, it's, it's going to be double punishment then if, if you also do, you know, whatever the code of behaviours uh, dictates. So I suppose the thing here is, you know, what I'd say to schools are teachers, you know, quickly they're going to, they're going to identify this. The code of beha behaviour is going to have to be reviewed in light of a new approach. I mean, you review, if you're, if you're changing approach, you know, you want to say what you do and do what you say. So, so the code of behaviour is going to have to be reviewed if you want to be a fully restorative school, to, just to reflect that. Now, I wouldn't suggest that they do it. It has to be done day one, you know, but I mean, you want, maybe you just want to identify a few people to start looking into that. And just somewhere in the code of behaviour, it says something along the lines of, look, we're a restorative school. We're going to have, you know, our first instinct is going to be a restorative approach. Um, you know, and if that doesn't work, you know, maybe there, there's, there's alternative um, consequences, if you like. Uh, and the thing as well about, about all of this is, you know, you know, you might have rules, but, you know, kids, there's a lot of gray area, you know, and, and different situations will arise. So, I mean, you know, like there's a big difference between a kid having a really, if you're like, good kid, never, never steps out of line, and you're just having a really bad day, you know, something's been happening, 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 you don't like, you mightn't see it, and then he, he, he lashes out either verbally or physically, um, we'll just say verbally, you know, um, you know, and, and then do you, do you come down with the, the full weight of, of, of the code of behavior in that situation? Or, or you know, do you take account of, of what happened if and when you find out? Or then you have the kid who's just maybe the, the frequent flyer, he's just having those issues all day, every day. You know, like kids know as well, you know, like, geez, Johnny, Mary, like they were just having a really bad day. So if you can have a start of conversation and acknowledge that and facilitate some, 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 some dialogue, you know, I, th I think most kids would say, right, that's reasonable, uh, and that uh, maybe the what's what's mandated in the, in the code of behavior would be a step too far. So I think it's our, our fear that can I can I deviate a little bit? But yeah, there's a fear again as, as the adult of, of maybe being judged. Um, but if you're if you if you get that ethos that explanation right, people will understand. Right, look, it's not 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 every situation is black and white, and as a first port of call, if we can try and resolve situations, um, yeah, I think that people would say that that's fair or that that's reasonable. Um, but yeah, so to answer the question, the code of behavior is going to have to be reviewed at, at some point to, to, to reflect the new the new approach. Um, and just maybe to, just the follow on question from that is that because your code of behavior is the and like whatever your rules are, whether you're a school, a company, a group, a nonprofit, whatever your rules that you set up and agree for yourselves is what you're held to if there's an issue and has to go to arbitration, like a lawyer or whatever those things. So um, not all codes of behavior would have discretion for teachers, either from historical reasons or whatever. So would it be something that, you know, if a school is looking at the journey before they change the code of behavior, should they, you know, acknowledge or at least mention somewhere along the line that you're starting a restorative practice journey and that you're going to be trying to implement some of these so that it's at least written down. So if you have the situation, you have a parent not happy with something <laughs> that you've, you've covered yourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so, so taking the point that, yeah, you don't, you probably don't want a big interval between starting to work restoratively and, and, and the code of behavior um, reflect, not reflecting that. So yeah, so you know, probably a good suggestion to have introduced some line in that and say, if you're starting a restorative journey, um, going to be trying some some new things and then you know at the same time then start the, the longer term um change you know changes that that, that need to happen uh, and the other thing is that when, when we when we really define rules and behaviors really narrowly you know you, you, yeah you're going to have to kind of 
be accountable to that. So, I mean, the good thing, if you like, about restorative approach is that you know you're you're, you're leaving a little bit of space. You know, you're allowing for for the grey, and, and and allowing for the fact that in in any situation, you know, the resolution might be, you know, the two people are going to have, you know, they'll come up with with their own solution. So, it might be that they're going to have lunch together every day, or in another situ- situation, you know, they're going to just maybe nod to each other from a distance, or you know, the solutions are going to be depending on, on the individuals and the circumstances are going to be quite different. So the, the tighter we define rules and consequences, you know, it's actually, we think it's, it's, it's something that's good and beneficial, but ultimately then we have to hold it to, to, to that. So sometimes it's better to, to leave it a little bit looser at, at the start, if you like, um, while still holding to the, you know, the principle that something will be done. You know, there will be a review, there will be a conversation, there will be something, uh, and that if, you know, trusting that you know if, if pupils and teachers and a principal or parents get together you know they will make the appropriate decision um, so there's a, bit, there's a bit of trust involved uh, allowing that gray area if you like um but it's, it's, but the point being sometimes if, if we narrow box things off too tightly as much as we think it's going to help us it can actually hurt us in, in the long run because yeah every situation is going to be different